In my previous video in this series, I talked about a project for turning an Extron crosspoint into an automatic SCART switcher. I hinted that I might be able to adapt that project to work with composite, component, and S-video. With a bit of research and testing, and a lot of help from Mike Chi, I think I've come up with a prototype that allows me to use an Arduino to auto-switch an Extron crosspoint for use with composite, component, and S-video. I've got it sitting on my bench over here, but before I show it to you, I want to talk a little bit more about composite, component, and S-video, their similarities and differences, and what that means for my project. Let's start talking about RGB. I assume if you're watching my channel, you're already familiar with what RGB is, but if you're not, here's a quick refresher. RGB is a way to represent a video signal, breaking down the components into red, green, and blue signals. There's also sync, which is an important aspect of RGB. Sync basically tells the TV on the other end how to arrange the RG and B color information on the screen. Now the RGB sync signal can be sent through a converter to be changed into something called YPBPR. Now we're not gonna go into too much detail about what this conversion actually is, but it's basically a math function that can convert the RGB into this YPBPR signal. Another term for YPBPR is actually component, and that's the component video that we're familiar with. This component signal is really three separate signals. The Y signal is really black and white information of a picture. Now this black and white picture information also has the sync information running along with it, and together this forms what's called the LUMA signal. Now the PB signal and PR signal are really signals that represent the difference between the color blue and Luma, or the color red in Luma. Now this PB signal and this PR signal could be used together along with Luma to actually get the green color information from the Luma signal. Long story short, this is just another way of representing RGB, especially in the NTSC format. If we take the Y, PB, and PR signals and we combine the PB and PR signals together, we can create something called C. Again, this is just a function that can combine the PB and PR signals together. But you'll also notice that the Y kind of carries over without any sort of combination. This Y and C signal forms what we call S-video. And again, you'll notice that the Y is still the black and white picture information along with sync, but the C signal is now all the color information, otherwise known as chroma. So these two signals together form S-video. We can take this another step by combining the luma and chroma signals together, and we can create what's known as composite video. Now composite video is really everything together, the black and white picture information, sync, along with the color information. You might be thinking, why is all this important for building an Xtron crosspoint auto switcher. Each one of these forms of video, component, S-video, and composite video, each have one common component, and that is the sync. If we had a good way of extracting the sync signal from each of these types of video, if we detect a sync signal from a console, we would know that that console is switched on. Thankfully, there are these readily available sync strippers that can do just that. This is an LM1881 sync stripper. This little integrated circuit will allow us to put composite video or a Luma signal through it and get back out a sync signal. I just wanna make a note that I'm not an electrical engineer, I'm a software developer. So I'm probably gonna get some of this information wrong. So please feel free to correct me or leave any feedback you have in the comments below. This is a data sheet for a Texas Instruments version of this LM1881. It doesn't matter what manufacturer, all these data sheets should be the same. This big diagram here shows what all the different legs on this IC do. There are eight different legs, but we're only gonna talk about a couple of them. The LM1881 can run from five volts to 12 volt power, so we need to be giving it at least five volts in order for this chip to be working. And this leg down here is for ground, and we'll keep that in mind later. The other two legs that we're gonna care about are the composite video input and this composite sync output. We can connect the composite video signal, or even a Luma signal, which is just black and white composite video, through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor into this composite video input leg of the LM1881. And if we've got a composite video signal going in here, we're going to be getting a composite sync output here. Let's take a look at this diagram here. This first line is sort of the anatomy of a composite video signal. It's not the whole thing, this is just a portion of it, but let's look at these little bumps right here. This is actually a pretty good visual of the difference between an analog signal and a digital signal. If you see these bumps right here, that's an analog signal because the signal can vary between a certain range, a low and a high range. The signal itself can be anywhere in between that range. So when there's actually black and white or color picture information coming through, it's gonna be in the form of this analog bumps right here. What this sync stripper actually does is it kind of chops off the top of these signals here, especially when there's video coming through, and it just expands it so that it's either always on or always off. There's no analog bumps, it's just either on or it's off. And when something is on, it's typically denoted as being a one, and if something is off, it's typically a zero. So the on or off signals here could be represented as ones or zeros. If you keep looking at the data sheet under 
composite sink, this part will tell us the voltage that's going to be coming out of that composite sink pin. If the sink signal is on at that particular moment, it's going to be 5 volts. Or if something is off, that signal is going to be really low. It's going to be close to zero, not quite zero, but let's count it as zero. So an on in our case is 5 volts and an off in our case is zero volts. So basically to summarize, if we have 5 volts connected here and ground connected down here, and we have our composite or Luma video coming in this pin, we're going to have a zero or a one signal coming out of this composite sync output. It's either going to be zero volts or five volts. This is also known as TTL sync. It's a sync signal that other electronic components that are expecting five volts would be able to understand. Other electronics such as this Arduino. An Arduino is a little microcontroller, or I guess you can think of it as a tiny computer that can take in some sort of input and provide some sort of output. The inputs and outputs come in and out of these legs on either side of the Arduino, also known as I.O. pins. If we take the sync signal from one of our sync strippers and we feed it into one of these input pins, we'd be able to use the Arduino to detect if there was a signal on that line by seeing if that sync signal was at a logic level one or five volts. And as you can see, this actually has a bunch of inputs, so we could connect a whole bunch of those sync strippers and be able to manage a whole bunch of different inputs at the same time using this Arduino. Now what you're seeing here are all the major electronic components to make this auto switcher work. The Arduino up here, there's an RS-232 to TTL converter up here, and all the sync strippers are down here. Let's talk about all the electronic components first, and then we'll take a look at the Arduino code. On this breadboard here are three of those LM-1881 sync strippers. These red wires up here are going to pin 8 on each of the sync strippers, and that's just going to go to this 5 volt rail on the breadboard up here. Same with these black wires down here, those are going to the ground pin or pin 4 on each sync stripper, and to the ground rail on the breadboard down here. Each sync stripper is going to need a composite or loom a video signal, and so that's where these three RCA breakout boards come into play. These breakout boards just take the video signal and then allow me to connect wires up to it. Each RCA jack has a ground wire that gets connected to this ground rail on the breadboard, and these yellow wires are going to feed into one of each of the sync strippers. Notice here that the actual signal coming out of these breakout boards is going through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, and that's just following the data sheet for the sync stripper. And now I just need to connect another wire to the composite sync output of each sync stripper. Okay, now these three wires are the three composite sync outputs coming from each of those sync strippers. The whole prototype is going to be powered from the Arduino's USB, so this is going to get connected to your computer and that's going to send 5 volts to this Arduino. But now we're going to need to get 5 volts from the Arduino to go to our breadboards. So I've connected a wire to the 5 volts and ground pins of the Arduino and those are going to go over to our sync stripper breadboard. So let's connect our ground and our 5 volts to the breadboard and now when the Arduino is plugged in we're going to have our 5 volt signal going to the rest of this breadboard down here. But now we've got to connect our three sync stripper outputs. I'm going to connect each one of these signals to one of the digital pins on this side of the Arduino, but not pin zero or pin one. I'm going to start at pin two. Pin zero and pin one on this Arduino Uno is for serial input and output. So now you have all three of our TTL sync outputs from the sync stripper going into pin two, three, and four of the Arduino. Now the last piece that we're going to need is this RS-232 to TTL converter, which is going to allow us to convert that serial output from the Arduino to the RS-232 protocol that the Extron Crosspoint needs. You don't really have to understand what that means, but that's just going to allow the Arduino to be able to control the Extron Crosspoint, basically sending commands to the Extron Crosspoint, and we'll go over that in the code. So let's connect this up to, I'm going to connect the arrow that looks like it's going to this port here. That's going to get connected to the Arduino port that says TX or transmit. And then the ground and voltage wires are going to connect to my sync stripper breadboard. Next, let's talk about how this mess is going to connect to the Extron Crosspoint before we go over the code. I've got my Extron Crosspoint sitting here. We're only going to need two other things to get this whole mess connected. The first thing I'm going to need is this DB9 cable that's going to connect to that RS-232 to TTL converter. And the other thing I need are these Y adapters for the composite or Luma signals. I'm going to connect these three Y adapters to my Crosspoint in the top port so that it's closest to where the breadboard is going to go. And then I need to put my prototype above it here. Then I'm going to connect the other side of the Y adapter to my RCA breakout boards and then just precariously balance this thing on top of my Extron Crosspoint. Point. Then I'm going to connect my DB9 connector to that serial converter, and that's the whole thing connected to the cross point. Then all I have to do is connect some consoles to the other end of these Y adapters, and then connect an RCA cable to whatever kind of upscaler or TV that I want it to connect to. In my case, I'm just going to connect it all to a RetroTink Mini. So that's the whole prototype here. Let's go talk about the code that makes this whole thing work. Now we're over in the Arduino IDE, the software that you can use to program your Arduino. Before we dive into the auto switching code, I want to show you a little bit about what the console sync looks like. I've got a Super Nintendo hooked up to the first sync stripper of my prototype board via composite. And we're going to use this serial platter here to visualize what that sync stripper data looks like. 
As soon as I turn it on, you'll notice all of these spikes here coming across the screen. These spikes here represent that sync data that's coming from the sync stripper. The top part of the spike up here represents a one, and the bottom here represents a zero. Now let me go ahead and turn the Super Nintendo back off, and you'll see what happens. We're no longer getting sync from the sync stripper, so we're just gonna get a constant zero. We're gonna use the fact that we have something other than a zero coming out of that sync stripper when a console is on as our way to auto switch to that particular console. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the code for the prototype. This top part is a bunch of variables that keep track of different things for our auto switcher code. This first variable keeps track of the Xtron output that we're gonna auto switch to. For now, we're only gonna be auto switching to port one. Next, we need to keep track of the Arduino pins that have sync strippers connected, and we need to calculate the number of those input pins. Next, we have a few variables that are going to keep track of something called state. Because a sync signal from a console is not always one, we're going to be keeping track of 30 different sync states for all of the pins. And we also want to keep track of the currently active input pin. Next is the Arduino setup function, which gets run one time when the Arduino turns on. This function is used for setting things like pin mode, as well as configuring the serial connection to the Xtron. The main body of the auto switching code is in this loop function. This loop function is going to continuously run over and over again as long as the Arduino is on. For for simplicity, we're going to keep track of whether or not an active pin has been found during a single loop. I'll explain more about that down below. Next, we're going to loop through each one of those pins and read and record its current sync state, either 1 or 0. Next, we need to decide what to do with the current pin that we're on. If within this loop function we haven't already found an active pin, and if the current pin is active, we're going to set this active pin found flag so that we don't auto switch to a different pin. What that means is the auto switcher is going to always switch to the first active pin that it finds even if there are more than one active console. But with that being said, we're only going to switch to that pin if it isn't already the current active pin. If the current pin is already the active pin, then we're just going to ignore it. If the current pin that we're on is not the current active pin, then we're going to set it as the active pin and switch to that input. And finally, we're going to increment this current state variable, which is basically just going to keep track of where to store the current state for this loop. Next is the isPinActive function, which takes in the number of a pin. Like I said before, because the sync is not always going to be one or active, we're going to look inside of those 30 pin states that we've stored and see if there are more one or active states than zero or off states. And if there are more active states than not active states, then we'll return true, otherwise return false. And lastly is the switch input function, which is going to send a serial command to the Xtron to bind the currently active input to that Xtron output. I've gone ahead and set up a little demo of the auto switcher prototype. I've got three consoles hooked up via composite, so there's a Genesis there, an N64, and a Super Nintendo. The consoles are connected to both the Xtron crosspoint as well as my prototype using these Y cables. Then I've got a RetroTink Mini hooked up as the only output, and that's being fed into a cheap USB capture card on my laptop. So right now, nothing's being detected by the RetroTink but if I turn on the Genesis, and now we're gonna have video. But like I said in the code review, if we go ahead and turn on the next console, you'll notice that it doesn't automatically switch to it yet. That's because we're still getting the sync signal from the Genesis here. So if I go ahead and turn the Genesis off, you'll see now we're getting that N64 output. And same thing for the Super Nintendo. If I try to turn the Super Nintendo on, the N64 is still up until I turn the N64 off, then we have the Super Nintendo. I wrote down a couple of notes about things that could be improved with my design. One major improvement and something I'll need to figure out how to do is try to add some kind of a smoothing on top of the sync signal. Currently, that firmware has to take 30 different sync samples in order to find out if that console is really on or if it's off. If I had some kind of a smoothing filter, something like add capacitors to those sync outputs, I might be able to completely skip that part so that I have one solid high signal or one so that I wouldn't have to do any of that sampling. In the next video in this series, I'm going to talk about taking my prototype design and turning it into a PCB. So if you haven't already, get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.